happy to be here. This is gonna be so fun and a great opportunity to learn. Now, Jessica, I mean, you are an icon, as we said. You sit on the board of directors for Yahoo, Baby to Baby, The Honest Company. Um, you founded this company from a non-traditional business background, right? Like, you were a superstar actress. What inspired you to start Honest, and what was your mission behind it? So I founded this company really because I felt like it needed to exist. Uh, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I had an allergic reaction to a, uh, a detergent my mother told me that I should use because it was for baby, you know, for baby clothes. And when I had this allergic reaction, I f obviously I freaked out because I was like, oh my goodness, what if my newborn baby had an allergic reaction and she couldn't talk to me and she just, her throat closes, like, that's awful. And I learned about a lot of untested, potentially harmful chemicals that are basically in everything. Um, and I was the face of a beauty company, and one of the most toxic industries is actually beauty. I also found out that a lot of men um, are running a lot of these companies that affect women's health and human health, and they don't necessarily consider the impact that these chemicals can have on human health. And basically in this country, enough people have to be proven to get sick or die from something until they'll even test a chemical for safety. So I was like, basically we're guinea pigs? Like what? And the sad truth is I lobbied on Capitol Hill for chemical reform and they were like, so are you liberal or are you conservative? And I was like, I'm a human being and we should just be protected. And when you go to a store, you shouldn't have to worry about if your beauty product or your detergent or a household product or a baby product could, could make you sick over time or could impact your health. And I was also looked at some charts on the rise of um, just people who are having issues like cancers, um, learning disabilities, um, obesity, early Alzheimer's. I mean, all of these illnesses are linked to these chemicals. So I was like, this is scary, and I just feel like now that I know this, I can't not know this. So my way to tackle it was to create a business that really proves that you can do good, um, you can make safe products, um, you could also think about and care about the planet, um, and you can give back. And so that was really uh, my motivation for starting Honest. What an impeccable mission. And you became the youngest Latina ever to take a company public with the IPO of Honest Company. You can give it up for that. Amazing. And so many people made the mistake of doubting you in the beginning, right? And just sort of doubting because you didn't come with this, you know, MBA or background in business. What inspired you to push through even though you didn't have that traditional background? And what advice would you give other, you know, creators or entrepreneurs who feel, you know, challenged because I don't have X, Y, and Z on my resume, but I have this great idea or I have this great mission. What would you say to them? I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing like, um, I would say, sort of the, the power of an energy around being a visionary and being inspiring. Um, there isn't an NBA that could ever uh, make uh, any one of you guys a more uh, fit entrepreneur or leader. It's really like, are you a visionary? Obviously you are, that's why you're here. Um, can you tell stories? You can, that's why you're here. And can you engage authentically with an audience who feels connected to you? Yeah, you can do that, that's why you're here. And something that you cannot learn in school is any of that. And you know what it takes to be a successful person in business? Everything you guys have not a degree. And at the end of the day, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into until you dive in head first. 
And I feel like with all of you, because this is a pretty new space to even be in, um, I mean, even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if you, if y'all would have told your parents, hey, I'm going to be a creator or an influencer, they would have been like, huh? <laughs> a what? <laughs> um, you're like, no, 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 really, I'm going to take photos and videos of myself <laughs> looking really cute um, or silly. Um, and people are going to love it and relate to it, and that's going to be a thing. And they're going to be like, right. Um, so I think what's interesting is this digital age that can sometimes, I mean, it does get a lot of uh, bad press uh, because, you know, it could be unhealthy if you do too much of anything, right? But at the end of the day, it gives all of us access to other people to build community. It gives us access to information. And it really allows a lot of freedom in the way that you guys want to tell stories. And you don't have to go through anyone to do that. Um, and there's, there's something so powerful about that. And so I would say lean into what you're good at. Um, you don't need to pretend like you're good at anything other than what you're good at. You know, hone in on that. Um, but know the marketplace. Know the space that you're getting into. And then where you're like, hey, I may not be the strongest here or there, surround yourself with people who are really great at that. And you guys can complement each other's skill sets. I also think that we as women, um, and I know there's men in here, but we as women um, haven't been taught by society that we can be good at math or good at science or good at running a P&L, um, but it's just, fake news. Um, Y'all have balanced a checkbook. I mean, women are really in charge of the household income. You guys have been doing this for a long time. It's the same thing. It's basically <laughs> how much is it costing to like run the stuff, and then how much are you bringing in, and then what's left over. I mean, that's at the end of the day. There you go. You're running a p and <laughs> um, And it doesn't need to be more complex than that. Um, so, you know, anytime somebody tries to make uh, what they're explaining to you in business, when it seems more complicated than it needs to be, it's because they're trying to feel, feel more uh, adequate, oftentimes. The smartest people in the room can distill it down to very simple and easy terms every time. So. You spoke about, you know, how particularly women, um, that we balance the checkbooks, right? And that we do some of these things in our everyday lives that are similar Which to what- Which is kind of archaic in a way, because I mean, who's writing checks anymore? I know, right? Can you imagine seeing someone pull out a check when you go to My CBS? kids are like, what is that paper? <laughs> yeah. Mom, you're wasting paper. Yeah, people would think that was so weird. But you speak about being a woman and how we do some of those things in our everyday life and how they can translate into running a business. How do you feel being both a minority and a woman has impacted your career in, in building up the Honest brand? And, and what advice would you have for you know, women or people in general in a, in a similar boat? I would say when you are an other, um, which isn't the majority of people who are like running the world. So the power dynamics lie in white cis men, facts. Um, and so when you are other, which is anything other than that, um, you can, and, and I, I would say person of color, woman, um, or anyone who is othered, you are sort of, if you're going to be successful, I think, and what I've learned, you have to have compassion um, for them and know that they just simply have no idea what your experience is like. They've walked through the world completely differently and they don't know what they don't know. And I used to get really irritated um, and I used to be angered and I, in fact it would like fuel me um, when you know they didn't get it. But then I sort of I'm in a stage now where it's like bring more people to the party um, and you know while it might still get on your last nerve when they constantly try to um, mansplain or whatever to you um, and it's gonna happen but it's because they really don't know any different you know 
um, and you can't blame them for that. You can just kind of, you know, walk them around the track, make them feel like it's their idea, and then reward them when they're like, oh my god, I have this amazing, and you're like, yeah, it's great, love it. <laughs> okay, so when are we gonna get to that thing that you came up with a week ago? Great. Um, and so you just kind of learn how to get what you need to get um, and do it in a way that they, where you can get them on board. Um, and I would say like, <clears throat> also when you do see that there's an opportunity for there to be more people that look like you at the table, um, make a point to make that happen. And it's okay to call out when you're the obvious token person of color woman, which I would say was four and a half years uh, at Honest, the first four and a half years. I was like, I'm literally the only woman in the boardroom. It feels like most of the time. I'm literally the only person that understands the consumer. You know, like what is happening? And I just didn't <clears throat> know how to take like that and I would talk about it a lot, but I didn't know how to take that, that step into action until I did. And it was uncomfortable, and it was awkward, and I just found a way to make connections with people who have different experiences. And once I did that, it was much easier for them to get on board with bringing in more women, bringing in more diversity, um, and making that uh, a core value of who we are as a business. You know, there's so many things that one could attribute to the success of The Honest Company, and not only just the quality of your products, but even hearing you and the mission behind it. And you guys are also a digitally native brand, right? Which I think makes it just so accessible and kind of cool in a way. Um, you've been no stranger to um, you know, utilizing social media and influencers. How do you feel that has impacted your brand growth and just your strategy overall? Well, I would say I probably created that strategy. I mean, 10 years ago, there really wasn't, uh, well, TikTok didn't exist, Instagram didn't exist, Facebook wasn't where it's at today. Um, Twitter was the first platform I got on. Uh, which was 13, 14 years ago. Um, and that was how I tapped into my authentic voice. Um, for me, it was a way for me not to feel sort of, um, I guess, sort of bound by a, a publication or a media company wanting to tell a story for their audience and use me as a headline which was kind of what media did with me for most of my career as an actress, um, you know. And I, I was like, there's something so liberating about being able to just be me, uh, no filters. And that's how I really started to build my voice and my presence was online, leveraging social media. And I felt like if I had an authentic relationship with people um, and you know we were on the same page and we could build community together, then when I did come out with my brand, that there was more trust there. And so this model was wacky. No one got it, no one understood it, and certainly nobody in Hollywood got it. Um, they were like, can't you just license your name to a perfume and be the face of a perfume and be in Macy's? And that was sort of like the pinnacle of people who are really good in business in Hollywood. And I was like, no, because I care about human health and wellness. I care about making a difference in this world. People are getting sick, and they don't need to be. And I, and I want to prove that business can do a better job at taking care of, of human beings and the planet, and we can do it in a beautiful way. We don't have to scare them. And um, it took me like three and a half years of me refining my voice online um, and back in the day, there was something called mommy bloggers. Um, I don't know if y'all know what that is, but that was the OG sort of online community where you had independent publishers. Um, and then it moved into um, social media being 
a really amazing place for people to build their voice and connect. Um, I would say that I was the case study for a lot of the tools that Instagram launched and Facebook. Um, I was into social commerce maybe f four or five years before it became a thing. Um, and I continue to try and innovate in that space. I think there's something amazing that you can literally live anywhere in the world and you can um, have a point of view and you can have a real inspiring, um, I call it edutainment um, relationship with a group of people and you can take them on a journey. And I love that you don't need someone to approve of you or to say like, oh yeah, yes you, but not you, which is what I think a lot was happening, definitely in Hollywood, it was sort of these like gatekeepers um, or in media or in the music business or entertainment, whatever it is. Um, so the influencer thing to me is um, amazing because you also don't have to pay commission <laughs> to these weird gatekeepers. Um, if you don't want to, you can if you want to, but it should be a choice. Um, so I think there's something so liberating about that and it really puts the power in all of your hands to build something um, meaningful. I, I'm sort of just like in awe listen to you speak about your brand and the thought that's gone behind every single aspect of it. I feel like we don't see that enough and that's just, it's really phenomenal and special. Oh, thank you. Um, and and it, you're clearly people focused. I'm wondering, for some of your new products, and you don't have to like give any hints of anything that may be coming soon, but have there ever been any that have been inspired directly by some of the consumers or feedback or people oh, yeah. you've seen? Yeah, I mean, even how I built the business day one, I was you know, definitely crowdsourcing on colorways and logos and taglines with my homegirls, um, and I still do. Um, I've never tested on animals. I only test on their children and mine. Um, <laughs> lots of children have approved of our formulas. <laughs> um, but, you know, and our, you know, detergents and our scent profiles, because I won't use any synthetic fragrances, um, and we have a pretty strict list of ingredients we won't use, but it then makes it that much more difficult to deliver effectiveness, right? And things to really have payoff and for people to believe it's really gonna work. So, um, and I know my friends will tell me the real truth. And so- You gotta have friends like that. Yeah, friends that'll friends be like- Real friends will tell me the real truth. Yeah, They're like, yeah. this don't work, or this is amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, so how much would you pay for that? Um, just to also know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that crowdsourcing is really important um, and having a trusted group of folks that you can rely on that will tell you the real truth. Um, but then also, if you can get um, you know, a group of your audience and let them also have input. So I would say, you know, we launched with 17 products and we have, I think, over 200 SKUs at least now. Wow, that's amazing. Um, but all of that growth came from our audience, you yeah. know, literally emailing us saying, can you make this? There's no clean that. Yeah. And can you do this and can you do that? Yeah. I think because of our price point and the effectiveness, mm -hmm. it's kind of a game changer, especially with our beauty and our color products. Do you feel like working with Amazon has helped facilitate that? Like why was it important for you to, you know, launch your products on Amazon and, and make it so that, you know, all these customers can, can come to you and come to Honest in that way? Well, I've always been a digital first person uh, in building my brand. Um, I love what that does and being able to reach anyone anywhere. Um, I think also when you're busy, it just gives so, so much ease to your day. Um, not having to think about that trip to the store to do the thing, unless you want, right? Um, so for me, uh, Amazon, you know, I had to wait until I built my brand up to a certain place to then get into business with Amazon and know how to work with them as a retailer. It's a little bit different than, uh, I think, 
you know, there's a couple different business models you can do with Amazon. So I think just knowing which way you want to go about uh, your business with Amazon. Um, and then I would say it's been a huge unlock. I mean, I'm a tiny, I'm still a very small business for my category. I mean, my competitors have been around for over 100 years. And so for me to be able to get the same sort of airtime as my big competitors when they obviously have like billions of dollars to spend and we really don't, um, and we can get in front of the audience and tell our authentic story, like that is just so empowering for a small business. Do you feel like, because we're both a part of the Amazon Influencer Program, mm -hmm. and we both are part of Amazon Live and do live streams, do you feel like that tool with Amazon has helped you really get in front of the audience and tell a more authentic, like be yourself and be you and speak about your brand? Yeah, I mean, I think use all of those tools, um, use them often, and learn what you like to do, because I think there's also that, right? If you're like, I can't stand going live, or if you're like, I freaking love going live and chatting, and I can do it for hours. Whatever's gonna bring you life and give you energy, that's what you should be doing on any of these platforms, because um, I think they can see the light inside of you and you're just inspiring them. So if you're like, I just wanna take really cute like aesthetic selfies and people can shop it great that's your storefront and if you're like hey i i have a gift where i can just chat to the camera for hours on end uh and you know i the audience is my bff do that so um i think it's whatever really you know for me, I love collecting data. I'm a little of a bit of a nerd. And so for me, I like to try different things because I like the data I can collect. And you know, when, when Amazon first launches some of these tools or if they're in beta, I like to test them out and use them. And then after they've been up and running for a little while, uh, I also like to use them and then compare the data. Um, so I don't know. That, for me, that's what I like to do. I love that you utilize sort of all of Amazon's tool, like your uh, storefront, your idealists, love mm -hmm. those. The live streams are a fun way yeah. to do it too. And, and it is, you're, you're really connecting in that way. Um, okay, I know we only have a few more minutes, but I wanna know a couple things about Jessica, starting with, what are your, th don't get nervous, I saw that face, don't worry, no need to get nervous. Okay. What are your three, right now, your three favorite honest products? My three favorite would be, so we have these um, travel size sanitizing wipes and they're small and they smell really good. Uh, we have lavender and grapefruit grove and they're just, to me, they're a lifesaver, especially because I have filthy children <laughs> and I have filthy dogs and a filthy husband, so it's great. Um, and they're just compact, on the go, lifesaver. Um, it is, even though it's Southern California, to me this is winter. Um, and so I have a Common Hill melting balm, which is literally like the most amazing, like thick balm that I put on my face at night. And I just, it just like plumps and does all the things. So I'm obsessed. And uh, third thing, we just launched this new mascara. It's like a volumizing one with like a blue, um, like blue primer instead of the white primer, and it has three different size like fibers in it. If you're Ooh. a girl who likes, you know, lashes, love it's a that. thing. It's the, I love it. Jess, who yeah. doesn't love lashes, yeah. like that. I mean, <laughs> love that. And sometimes I even use both mascaras. Mm. All right, insider beauty tip. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right, another thing we want to know: What is your most repeated purchase on Amazon? Maybe top two repeat purchases? Ultima, it's like a hydration packet, and I literally drink one every day, um, and when I'm traveling too, <laughs> um, obsessed. What's another one that I, gum? <laughs> I'm like, I have gum like everywhere, and yeah. my kids steal my gum, and I'm like, why, where's the gum? And so gum, I just need it in every corner of my home. 
And my last question for you really quick is what would you tell your younger self? If you were sitting in this audience, if you were starting out, you had the platform of Amazon to be able to really grow whatever you wanted to. Is there a note that you would tell your younger self? Date more boys. <laughs> I mean, I'm 18 years with my husband. It's, it's been awesome. But you know, date more boys when I was younger. I was so nervous around boys. I dated nobody. Um, no, I'm kidding. I would say uh, lean into, don't be afraid of your intelligence. Um, embrace that you uh, are capable and uh, that you have the fire. I think I used to sort of, all the things that made me who I am as an adult, as a kid, I felt shame around it, I was embarrassed. Um, and I think that, you know, again, as women, we're kind of told that we should sort of allow others to take the stage and, you know, you can be considered a show off. Guys have no problem taking credit for stuff. Right? <laughs> Guys have no problem saying, you know, announcing they, they may have the answer. And so I would say not only should you always raise your hand, um, make space for yourself, but also make space for others while you're at it. Um, we have to support each other. We're in this together. You know, we're 50% of the population. We shouldn't be getting 70 or 80 cents to the dollar for doing the same damn job, right? So true. And so for me, I would say just like leaning further into that female community, there's so much more that we have in common than what pulls us apart. The more that we think that there's only seat for one of us at the table, the more we're feeding into the scarcity that doesn't exist. It's fake news. And, you know, we have to really just be there for each other. Um, have more compassion for one another, and we cannot be competitive with one another. We have to support it. We, I mean, that's such a big one, because if we stay in these little tiny tornadoes, we're just, there's only power of one, and we need all of us if we want to see the change that we really believe that we need in this world, in this country, in this state, in your community. So... Thank you That's so much, my, Jessica. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for, being for being here. here. Thank you for being such an inspiration, honestly. Thank you for fighting on behalf of all of us on Capitol Hill and making great products. And thank you for being a lot of fun on Amazon. You guys, make sure you check out the uh, Honest uh, Beauty Lounge that's here. Pick up a gift courtesy of Amazon and Honest. Some great products that you know are going to be good for your skin. Weren't tested on animals, just Jessica's children. <laughs> so you know that it's great. Uh, make sure you follow Jessica as well. And, and thank you again for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Give it up for Jessica Alba, everyone.